Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's press conference. I'm Stephanie Levitz with the Toronto Star. I'll be moderating today. Thank you to our ministers and the Deputy Prime Minister for being here. I understand you each have short remarks to make with us, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Thank you so much. Go ahead, ministers. Okay. Bonjour. D'abord, je vais parler d'une série de nouvelles mesures qui visent à garantir que les Canadiens et Canadiens aient un traitement équitable de la part de leur banque. Ensuite, je vais céder la parole au ministre Champagne qui parlera des mesures que notre gouvernement met en place pour stimuler la concurrence dans le secteur de l'épicerie. Et puis, le ministre Anand qui parlera d'examen des dépenses que j'ai annoncées au printemps dans le budget, qu'elle s'efforce maintenant de mener à bien. Avant de commencer, je tiens à aborder brièvement les données concernant l'inflation qui ont été rendues publiques ce matin. Inflation in September was 3.8%, down from 4% in August. The decline in headline inflation was broad-based, including on the price of food. And encouragingly, both of the Bank of Canada's measures of core inflation also eased in September. The trend is in the right direction, and that is good news for Canadians. When it comes to ensuring that Canadians are treated fairly by their banks, we're taking action in four ways. First, uh, just over a week ago, I met with the CEOs of Canada's largest banks, and I told them that it is my firm expectation that they abide by our government's mortgage guidelines, as published by the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada. Our objective is to protect Canadians by ensuring their financial institutions treat them fairly and provide them with the tailored mortgage relief they need, all with the goal of helping Canadians who are today struggling with higher mortgage payments on their principal residence. For Canadians with mortgages who are stressed and feeling squeezed, I want you to know that you are entitled to options and flexibility from your financial institution. Our government will be closely monitoring compliance with these mortgage rules in the coming weeks. We understand it's a challenging time for Canadians and we want them to know we are there for them. Second, to make banking more affordable, I have instructed the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada to work on ma making no and low cost bank accounts more readily available to more Canadians. Charges can rack up, for example, when it comes to online payments, debit transactions, e-transfers, or digital banking services, which have become central to how so many Canadians make payments and handle their banking today. At my direction today, the Financial Consumer Agency will now work to ensure that a greater number of banks offer enhanced and modernized no and low cost accounts to a greater number of Canadians. Troisièmement, nous prenons des mesures pour servir contre les frais indésirables, à commencer par les frais pour les chèques sans provision que les banques peuvent facturer aux Canadiens. Ces frais, qui peuvent s'élever à 50 dollars, touchent de façon disproportionnée les Canadiens et Canadiens les plus vulnérables, 
parmi lesquels certains vivent d'une chèque de paille à l'autre. Mon ministère déterminera de combien ces frais peuvent être réduits et nous prendrons d'autres mesures dans notre énoncé économique de l'OTAN pour sévir contre les frais indésirables et injustes. And fourth, in order to ensure Canadians can count on always being treated fairly when dealing with their financial institution, I am designating the Ombudsman for Banking Services and Investments as Canada's single, independent, transparent, not-for-profit external complaints body for the banking sector. For too long, banks have been able to choose who adjudicates complaints from Canadians. Canadians have asked for and deserve better, and with an independent, transparent, and not-for-profit ombudsperson, that is what they will receive. I also want to quickly address the BC government's new legislation to regulate the short-term rental market. This is a positive and important step in the right direction in an area of provincial jurisdiction. We know that short-term rentals through sites like Airbnb and Verbo mean fewer homes for Canadians to rent and live in full-time, especially in urban and populated areas of our country. That is why our government is actively examining what options and tools exist at the federal level to ensure more short-term rentals are made available as long-term rentals, as permanent homes for Canadians to live in. We'll have more to announce on that in the weeks to come. Thank you very much for your attention, and let me now pass it over to François-Philippe. Merci, euh, Madame la vice-première ministre. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Permettez-moi tout d'abord de dire que les Canadiens continuent d'être préoccupés, et à juste titre, par le coût de la vie et surtout par le prix euh, à l'épicerie. Comme vous le savez, nous travaillons jour après jour pour rendre le coût de la vie plus abordable pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes. Et alors que nous travaillons pour stabiliser les prix des aliments, je tiens à dire que ce n'est que le début. We need concrete actions from all the actors across the food chain. Already, we have seen the dairy farmers recommend that, fragment, that farm gate price of milk stay the same for this year, which is a suggestion which has been backed by the Canadian Federation of Independent Grocers. This is the type of action we want to see and that Canadians need to make sure that we stabilize prices in Canada. Yes, Canadians want to see action in the weeks and months ahead, but they also want a long-term solution to high, food, to high food prices. And that long-term solution is to have more competition. It's really that simple. More competition means more options, which leads to downward pressure on prices. And competition is exactly what we're working on with Bill C-56, which will give us more tools to make sure Canadians get some long-term relief at the grocery store. This is how we can keep grocers more accountable. How we would build, uh, how we would do that, Bill C-56 uh, will propose a number of measures that will be amending the Competition Act. First, we want to give more power to the Competition Bureau to investigate when industries are behaving unfairly. It is unacceptable that in 2023, the Bureau is unable to obtain complete and precise data from industry players. Second, en faisant en sorte qu'il soit plus facile de bloquer les fusions qui ne sont pas dans l'intérêt des consommateurs et des travailleurs. Les consommateurs doivent être au cœur des décisions, pas seulement les intérêts commerciaux. By empowering the Bureau to take action against schemes that stifle competition and reduce consumer choice, including situations where, for example, large grocers prevent comp the competition from setting up their own chain within a certain radius. Putting commercial interest above consumer interest needs to stop. We need to pass this bill as soon as possible, and I call on all my fellow parliamentarians to move quickly so that we can start seeing more competition in Canada. Nous devons adopter le projet de loi C-56 le plus rapidement possible, et j'invite tous mes collègues parlementaires à agir rapidement afin que nous puissions ensemble commencer à avoir plus de concurrence au Canada. I can assure you when you talk to uh, uh, fellow uh, colleagues around the world, 
competition is really the way to put a more pressure on the market over the mid to long term. And let me be clear, Canadians must be able to put food on the table. Canadians must get competitive prices and we must increase competition. And for that to happen, we need to see words into actions from the grocers. If we don't see that, and let me repeat, if we don't see that, we are ready to take more action so that we can get more tools in order to have a more competitive market here in Canada. With that, I will be very happy to ask my colleague, Minister Anand. Okay, hi everyone, bonjour tout le monde. Over the last number of years, our government has worked hard to build a strong economy, which is why Canada maintains a AAA credit rating, the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and low unemployment. However, we also know that during this economic time, we are living through high inflation and high interest rates, along with many other challenges that are forcing everyone, including our government, to pivot and refocus. Ce matin, des chiffres sur l'inflation ont été publiés, et je ne doute pas que l'opposition vous dira que ces chiffres d'inflation sont le résultat de nos dépenses. On the contrary, just as we did during the pandemic, we have been putting in place programs to support Canadians, bill after bill, law after law. These programs include providing 11 million Canadians with the grocery rebate, 4.2 million Canadians with the workers' benefit, and 6 million Canadians with increased old age security. Another example, is during the pandemic, when our small businesses couldn't keep their lights on, we introduced several measures, including the SIBA loan, to help them get through dark times. Now, we continue to support small business owners and their workers, who are the backbone of our economy, through the extension of the SIBA loan repayment program. In other words, unlike the opposition, who vote against initiatives to support Canadians, our government firmly believes in investing in Canadians time after time because that is how we build a stronger economy and a stronger country. Comme vous l'avez entendu aujourd'hui, nous sommes pleinement engagés à réduire le coût de la vie et nous allons le faire tout en continuant d'investir de façon responsable. Right now, Canadian families and businesses and corporations are all checking their books to see where they can make savings, and the Government of Canada is noted. We are looking for mere cents on the dollar in terms of refocusing spending to prioritize smart governance and prudent fiscal management. To achieve this, I asked ministers to look at any excess spending to find a total of $15 billion over five years and $4 billion every year thereafter. I want to be clear, this is not the Harper era drop and in fact, we have taken key lessons from that experience. For example, we learned that giving flexibility rather than dictating how to allocate savings is more effective. Subjecting micro-agencies to significant cuts is counterproductive, and forcing all savings to come from operating budgets risks program integrity and future funding issues. Every minister has been tasked with re-examining things like outsourcing and executive travel to determine whether there is any waste and the goal is to refocus that spending towards current priority issues for Canadians, like the clean economy and affordable housing and supports overall for the middle class. Maintenant, les propositions d'économie feront l'objet d'un processus d'examen rigoureux pour s'assurer que les économies du gouvernement sont viables et n'ont pas d'incidence négative sur la prestation de services futurs ou l'intégrité des programmes. We will begin to share the results from this spending review publicly, starting next month with supplementary estimates B, followed by main estimates to be published by March 1st, 
2024. Nous allons partager les résultats de cette revue budgétaire pendant le mois de novembre et avant le 1er mars 2024. In this economic time, we must ensure that taxpayer dollars are being used most effectively, and that is the work that we will continue to do. And I will continue to update you on this work. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Minister. On est aux questions. Wonderful. Um, we've agreed amongst us to make the most time as possible. We know you only have 20 minutes. It'll just be one question per reporter, and that way, if we have time for a second round, lightning quick, we'll do it. Um, so I'll start with Kate from CBC. This is a question for the Deputy Prime Minister. Canada repatriated a woman this year who was married to an infamous ISIS fighter serving multiple life sentences in the U.S. for the deaths of American, British, and Japanese citizens. She's here on a peace bond. Should Canadians be comfortable with this? Um, thanks for the question, and I'm going to leave comment on that to the responsible ministers. You don't have any opinion on whether or not I, 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 I don't have any further information to share about that. Milan? Oui, bonjour, euh, Madame Freeland. Euh, vous dites que vous avez rencontré là, les PDG des grandes banques euh, pour qu'ils suivent les lignes directrices là, concernant euh, les hypothèques. Euh, pourquoi est-ce que vous avez senti besoin de les rencontrer? Ce n'est pas quelque chose qu'ils font déjà. Il euh, y a beaucoup de gens qui ont eu des, des extensions là, pour leur, leur hypothèque puis des, des aménagements. Oui, oui, je le sais. Euh, j'ai des rencontres, j'ai des rencontres euh, comme était le pratique des ministres des Finances, euh, toujours au Canada. J'ai euh, une rencontre chaque six euh, mois avec les PDG des grandes banques du Canada. Euh, je pense que c'est une bonne pratique qui, est, qui permet au gouvernement de partager euh, nos expectations euh, des institutions financières et qui permettent les institutions financières de partager avec le gouvernement euh, ce euh, qu'ils voient euh, dans l'économie canadienne, l'économie mondiale. Alors, ce sont des rencontres normales. Euh, dans notre rencontre il y a dix jours, nous avons discuté beaucoup à euh, la situation des Canadiens et canadiennes, de monsieur et madame tout le monde. Et j'ai souligné que l'inquiétude que notre gouvernement a euh, vers les gens qui ont des hypothèques pour euh, leur maison principale, on sait, euh, on sait en tant que député des circonscriptions, que c'est un moment difficile pour beaucoup des Canadiens euh, qui ont des hypothèques avec les taux d'intérêt élevés. Et pour moi, c'était important de soulever cette situation humaine dans la conversation avec les institutions financières et de souligner que pour notre gouvernement, la priorité, c'est la vie des gens. La priorité, c'est de s'assurer que les banques seront souples, que les banques seront à l'écoute aux questions, aux demandes, aux difficultés que les Canadiens et les Canadiens ont. Merci. Mackenzie Gray, Global. Et on a, je vais juste peut-être ajouter un, un détail. Uh, on a publié uh, le 5 juillet, alors cet été, uh, ces règles de l'agence. Uh, et uh, les institutions financières sont au courant de ces règles. Um, et la rencontre que j'ai eue était une opportunité pour moi de souligner l'importance de ces règles. Uh, hi, Ms. Freeland McKenzie with uh, Global News, McKenzie Gray. Um, a few minutes ago, AFP and AP have reported that the Israeli military has struck a hospital in Gaza. The Gaza Health Ministry is saying 500 people have died. That's now adding to the thousands of people who have died in Gaza. Are you comfortable in the past few days, the actions that the Israeli military have taken in Gaza? So I'm not going to comment on that 
specific news report because I'm not familiar with it. We've been um, focused on the economic uh, issues that we wanted to share with you guys, so I won't comment on that specifically. Um, but I will say the following. Um, the terrorist attacks by Hamas on the state of Israel and the Israeli people were a grave and terrible violation. Canada recognized those attacks as a terrorist attack, and we support the state of Israel and the people of Israel, and we recognize that the state of Israel has the right to defend itself within international law. At the same time, I think it is really important for us to underscore that Hamas is a terrorist organization which does not represent the people of Gaza, that it is very, very important that human life, that civilian life be guarded and preserved, and that international law and the law of war be followed. Ray? Oui, bonjour, M. Champagne. Une question concernant l'inflation alimentaire. Vous nous avez dit ce matin, puis encore tout à l'heure, mm -hmm. ce n'est que le début de votre travail. Mais êtes-vous capable de dire aujourd'hui aux Canadiens à quel moment l'inflation alimentaire va retourner autour du 2 visé? Bien, écoutez, c'est un travail, je veux dire, où il y a des étapes à court terme, moyen terme et long terme. À court terme, vous avez vu, on a présenté un plan. D'abord, le fait d'amener les 5 C au Ottawa, vous direz, M. Fillon, on me dit que c'est une première au Canada, parce que c'est une industrie qui n'est pas réglementée. Alors, déjà, d'exprimer la frustration de 40 millions de Canadiens et Canadiens en disant « Vous devez faire votre part pour stabiliser les pires au Canada, et on sera là pour s'assurer que vous le faites. » Parce que si vous ne le faites pas volontairement, on a été très clair qu'il y aurait des mesures qui seraient prises pour arriver à stabiliser les pires au Canada. Ceci dit, je pense que les gens, vous savez, durant le week-end, je rencontrais des gens un peu partout au Québec, et les gens me disaient « Tout le monde comprend qu'on euh, ne peut pas faire de miracle, mais les gens s'attendent à ce qu'on pose des gestes. » et des gestes concrets qui vont aider les gens, parce que les, les gens comprennent que ce n'est pas comme quelque chose qu'on peut allumer et éteindre. Stabiliser l'inflation, euh, stabiliser les prix euh, des aliments au Canada, c'est un travail qui va prendre les prochains jours, les prochaines semaines, les prochains mois. On voit des données qui semblent aller dans la bonne direction, mais ceci dit, on va continuer euh, de faire plusieurs choses. D'abord, il y a... Euh, ce qu'on veut voir des, des épiciers, c'est-à-dire les engagements qu'ils ont pris, on veut voir les résultats de ça, les actions qu'ils vont prendre. Euh, deuxièmement, comme vous savez, on a parlé du code de conduite dans le domaine de l'alimentation. On a parlé de donner plus d'informations et de s'attaquer à des enjeux qu'on a appelés euh, la réduflation, par exemple, qui touche euh, plusieurs Canadiens et Canadiennes, et de mettre ça en évidence. Et finalement, la, la concurrence, parce que euh, durant la dernière semaine, je parlais, par exemple, à un des, des PDG d'une des grandes chaînes alimentaires en France. Il me disait, M. Champagne, euh, et, et je pense que c'est d'évidence, quand vous regardez le marché américain, vous regardez le marché britannique, vous regardez le marché français, on a trois épiciers au Canada qui contrôlent 60 du marché. Alors, c'est l'évidence même que la meilleure façon de stabiliser les prix euh, de la nourriture au Canada sur le moyen et long terme, c'est d'avoir une loi sur la concurrence qui est plus robuste. C'est exactement ce qu'on demande aux partis d'opposition. On dit, si vous voulez faire quelque chose pour aider les Canadiens et Canadiennes, une chose, les gens vous implorent, là, les gens vous regardent aujourd'hui, vous disent, faites une chose, votez pour la loi C-56, ça va donner des outils, on, je les ai énumérés, par exemple, on a vu quand le, 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 le bureau de la concurrence a voulu faire une étude. Imaginez en 2023 que le bureau n'a pas le pouvoir de demander de l'information aux compagnies, de s'assurer que l'information est donnée pour avoir une étude complète. Deuxièmement, on a, au cours des dernières années, vous avez vu, il y a cette fameuse euh, situation-là qu'on a laissé passer des fusions qui probablement auraient pu être revues si on avait un cadre sur la loi de la concurrence différente. Et finalement, vous avez vu ces pratiques-là qui sont anti-compétitif qu'on a vu, par exemple, dans un centre commercial où aujourd'hui, comme on se parle, là, on est ici aujourd'hui, il, il y a des endroits où dans un centre commercial, les baux qui ont été signés ne permettent pas d'avoir de la compétition. Si vous avez un grand épicier, vous ne pouvez pas avoir un épicier indépendant à côté. Ça, ça doit cesser. Et la meilleure façon de donner un coup de main aux Canadiens et aux Canadiennes, présentement, c'est de 
pour les partis d'opposition d'appuyer ce qu'on a présenté, réformer la loi sur la concurrence, continuer de pousser euh, les grandes chaînes d'alimentation, aller vers euh, le code de conduite pour euh, l'épicerie, puis en même temps donner plus d'informations aux Canadiens et aux Canadiennes, parce qu'on va continuer avec le bureau qu'on a créé, on va continuer de mettre en évidence des pratiques qui sont problématiques, par exemple comme la réduflation, la déqualiflation, dont le professeur Charles Bois parlait souvent. Mais ce que je peux vous dire, c'est qu'on est au début, euh, mais on va continuer de se battre parce que euh, les gens me disent, écoutez, on comprend qu'il ne faut pas faire des miracles, mais de grâce, continuez de vous battre pour nous, puis c'est exactement ce qu'on va faire. Brian Platt. Hi, Minister Freeland. Uh, Brian with Bloomberg. Brian Platt with Bloomberg. Um, I wanted to ask about the I wanted to ask about the short-term uh, rentals piece. You said you're looking at all federal uh, all tools and options available to the federal government and looking at how to ensure more short-term rentals are made available as long-term. But that seems like something that is pretty squarely up to the provinces. So is there anything directly, any direct federal tools you're looking at here, tax treatment or mortgage rules, or is this all about putting conditions on federal funding to provinces? Um, thanks for the question and thanks for noticing. Um, I do think the action BC has taken is very important. And you are quite right that this is an area of provincial jurisdiction. Um, but it is so important that we are examining whether there are any tools in the federal jurisdiction that we could use that would make a difference in this space. And the reason we're so focused on it is we really do understand that housing is a very challenging issue for Canadians. and. We believe that the core challenge is there just aren't enough homes available for people to buy or for people to mm -hmm. rent. And so we're kind of, you know, reviewing the space and we're thinking, what can we do both in the medium term um, and immediately to relieve some of the pressure? The medium term measures we've been talking about. Um, the G lifting the GST on purpose-built rental, which is in Bill C-56 that Francois Philippe has been talking about, and I'd like to take this opportunity to <laughs> encourage all parties to support that measure. You know, it has been, you know, widely, widely supported um, in Canada, the fact that we put that on the table, and I think there was a story in the Globe and Mail yesterday saying that people are, are already seeing more purpose-built rental being built mm -hmm. because of that measure. Mm -hmm. That is a very good thing, mm -hmm. but even if people, you know, started building the day after the PM announced it in London, Ontario, it takes a while for those new apartments to be built. So we are looking around and are saying, what can we do right away that makes more homes available for Canadians? And the short-term rental is one of those spaces. Some estimates that I've seen suggest that in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver alone, you could get up to 30,000 more units available right away for people. So that would make a big difference. Um, and that's why recognizing, as we do, that this is within provincial jurisdiction, we are taking a very careful look at whether there are any tools in the federal toolbox we could use as well. But if other provinces want to follow BC's lead, that would be great for Canadians too. Valérie. Euh, bonjour, Mme Freeland. J'aimerais vous entendre sur ce projet de ce programme d'assurance médicaments qui vous lie euh, au NPD. Aujourd'hui, euh, il y a le premier ministre euh, Legault, euh, tout comme son, son ministre Robert, qui disent si jamais euh, le fédéral va de l'avant avec ça, euh, on veut s'assurer que le Québec a un droit euh, de compensation, un droit de retrait garanti. Est-ce que vous pouvez vous engager aujourd'hui auprès du Québec sur ce programme-là? Uh, premièrement, uh, mon collègue, le, notre collègue, le ministre Hollande, uh, travaille uh, sur cet enjeu uh, et uh, il a par, on a discuté cela au sein du cabinet aujourd'hui et j'ai beaucoup de confiance, comme mm -hmm. nous tous avons, uh, au ministre Hollande uh, de uh, trouver la bonne voie. Concernant le Québec, Uh, je pense que notre gouvernement a démontré à uh, uh, plusieurs moments mm -hmm. que nous pouvons tr 
trouver les bonnes solutions pour le Canada et pour le Québec. On l'a fait avec les garderies du petit enfance. On a juste conclu une entente concernant le logement. Uh, 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 je discute, uh, j'échange très souvent avec le ministre Girard à uh, tous les enjeux fédéral provincial. Uh, François Philippe uh, uh, est ici avec moi. On a fait un grand investissement en North Vault, un investissement fédéral, provincial. Je sais que le premier ministre Legault est très fier de ça. Il dit que c'est le plus grand investissement dans l'histoire du Québec. C'est ça, mais le plus grand investisseur dans cet investissement, c'est le fédéral. Alors, le fédéral a nous comprenons l'importance de travailler avec le Québec et je pense que nous avons démontré que dans chaque enjeu, on est capable de le faire et on va continuer de le faire. Tout à fait. Greg Quinn. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Freeland, at, at IMF meetings last week, you were there and, and uh, staff economists urge central banks to make sure they don't lower interest rates too soon to make sure infl sovereign inflation doesn't take hold. Is that global backdrop going to make your own domestic commitments more difficult when it comes to, you know, setting conditions for lower borrowing costs for families or even maintaining fiscal responsibility? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, I was hoping someone would ask about the IMF World Bank meetings. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you guys why. Because in the IMF World Economic Outlook that was published last Tuesday, Um, I hope that every financial and economic journalist will turn to page 132, um, uh, which I actually carry it in my notebook with me and I look at it a few times every day, um, because that is the comparative table of uh, the debt and deficit positions of the major industrialized economies. Um, not published by the Government of Canada, this is published by the IMF, and when you look at that table, as I hope you will all do as soon as this press conference is over, um, I think you will see that Canada is the leader of the pack, uh, certainly the leader of the pack of the G7 by a long way. And I emphasize that because, you know, as Anita was saying, um, we recognize that fiscal responsibility is important for Canadians. I think culturally, um, it's something we care about maybe more than people in other countries. Uh, and looking at that table, um, I think should provide some very important reassurance to Canadians that we are in a good place. Now, as to your question, um, look, um, My own view, which Francois Philippe and Anita have been talking about, you know, from different aspects, is um, the, these are tough times mm. for Canadians. Um, they are tough times in the lives of Canadians. And, you know, when we go home to our writings, what do we hear is challenging for Canadians? Um, and I think all of us hear versions of the same thing. Um, that Things cost a lot, so prices are a concern for people. And the impact of interest rates, which regular Canadians feel most through their mortgages, is the other big pressure. Um, and that's why I spoke about action that we are taking to ensure that Canadians are treated fairly, Um, that banks, financial institutions leave all, put all the right options on the table for them and don't take advantage of them. So I think those are the two pressures, prices, mortgages. Um, our government recognizes 100% the independence of the Bank of Canada. That is foundational for the strength of Canada's economy. It's foundational for our AAA rating. What we also recognize is what we need to do as a federal government, is use all the tools in our toolbox to help stabilize prices mm -hmm. because we know that once prices are stabilized, then that will create the conditions that allow the Bank of Canada to move from the current position of interest rates, which are intentionally contractionary, to a more neutral position. So that's really our focus. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Anita. Yeah. 
so in my previous life before becoming um, a member of parliament, I taught corporate and securities law for about 25 years and did a lot of work relating to the uh, ombudsman for banking services and investment that Chrystia spoke about today. And I want to say that what she announced relating to the work of OBSI going forward is significant because now OBSI is going to have an additional purpose and role relating to affordability issues that are at the very heart of our economy and families' way of coping in these economic times. And so I'm very pleased to see additional roles and responsibilities being given to OBSI at this time. As an independent and impartial body that will a be able to examine affordability issues that are affecting the middle class and Canadians generally so that, that we can have another voice speaking on their behalf. We're just about out of time, so this has to be our last question. Michel Saba, the Post Canada. Oui, bonjour, Madame Freeland. Une petite question rapide sur l'imposition des géants du web. Aurez-vous du nouveau à annoncer sur ce sujet dans la mise, mise à jour économique qui s'en vient? Euh, euh, merci pour la question. Et on l'a discuté euh, avec nos homologues euh, à, à l'international. Euh, pendant la réunion du Fonds international monétaire et Banque mondiale, euh, la position du Canada n'a pas changé. Euh, en même temps, euh, on continue d'avoir euh, des constructives conversations avec les États-Unis, avec euh, la secrétaire du Trésor des États-Unis, Madame Yellen, et son équipe. Euh, pour le Canada, Uh, pour nous, uh, on préfère uh, de trouver une solution uh, avec nos voisins uh, et on continue de travailler sur ça. Mais notre position n'a pas changé. That concludes today's press conference. Thank okay, you very merci much. beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Next stop. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.